We're back, and here with me now is the mayor of Hoboken, Dawn Zimmer. We just spent a lot of time explaining what she says has been happening to her city, uh, and that, according to the mayor, top officials in the Christie administration have told her that her city will only receive critical Sandy relief funds if she expedites a redevelopment project in North Hoboken. It's for conversations, <clears throat> excuse me, that she says took place in May 2013. And mayor Zimmer did not then, and has not since, given her approval for the project. Hoboken still has yet to receive any of the more than 100 million dollars the city has asked for anything more than the $342,000 it's gotten at least, which is enough for one generator and one study. Uh, again, this out of more than $100 million requested. We have invited all of the government officials involved in our previous segment uh, who we mentioned onto the program this morning. They have declined, but there are responses that they have sent us. We're going to show you those right now. This is from Governor Christie's spokesperson, Michael Druniak, speaking on behalf of both the governor and lieutenant governor. Quote, Mayor Zimmer has been effusive in her public praise of the governor's office and the assistance we've provided in terms of economic development and Sandy aid. What or who is driving her only now to say such outlandishly false things is anyone's guess. And here's another response from the commissioner of the Department of the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs, Richard Constable. You say that when the two of you shared a stage uh, at a televised event in May of, tw of 2013, just before that event started, uh, he told you, <laughs> uh, sorry, this is, this is, here it is, I I'm sorry, this is the statement from Constable. I doubt that Mayor Zimmer would say such a thing because that statement is categorically false. That is what uh, that is what Richard Constable told us. And the governor's office also told us they were particularly surprised to hear of Mayor Zimmer's charges, given the positive things she has said about the governor uh, after the conversations she has described uh, that, that allegedly took place. The mayor tweeted in August of last year, for instance, when the governor was running, running for re-election, that, to be clear, I am very glad Governor Christie has been our governor. I am not endorsing because of Hoboken's nonpartisan mayoral race. And another one from the same day, he has done a great job for NJ and Hoboken. We have a nonpartisan mayoral election on uh, November 5th. So, uh, Mayor Zimmer, thank you for joining us. And there is so much to get into here. I, I guess I'll just start, though, with the, the, the basic response from the Christie administration that they're giving is, hey, look, you know, she says in these diary entries, she has told, uh, you know, Steve's show that uh, her Sandy relief was tied directly to this Rockefeller project. And, and she was so uh, outraged by this in early 2013. And yet here she is in the middle of 2013 tweeting favorable things about, you know, Christie's been good for New Jersey, good for Hoboken. Um, how can you believe? her if she's saying those nice things then and this terrible thing happened before. Well, I mean, I, of course, I'm, I'm thankful for every penny that we received for Hoboken. Our city was completely devastated. So, I mean, I'm thankful for whatever we, you know, we received. But, you know, the fact is that the lieutenant governor came to Hoboken. She pulled me aside in the parking lot and she said, I know it's not right. I know these things should not be connected, but they are. And if you tell anyone, I'll deny it. And... <laughs> So these, I mean, I, I, the bottom line is it's not fair for the governor to hold Sandy funds hostage for the city of Hoboken because he wants me to give back to one private developer. And it's important that, I know it's very complicated for the public to really understand all of this, but I have a legal obligation to follow the law, to bring balanced development to Hoboken. We have, we're one square mile. We have... Uh, and we're the fourth largest densely populated city in the country. So we have to look very carefully at, uh, carefully at these things. The Rockefeller pro Group, they own four acres. There's another property owner that owns nine acres. So I cannot give a windfall to one property owner because the governor wants me to in exchange for the Sandy Fund. So I'll tell you, I feel like I'm literally between a rock and a hard place. Well, so, so what, what about the question of timing? I think uh, uh, another skeptical question that might be asked here is, again, this happened, uh, the, the draft report came back in January, but the threats came in May of 2013, and we're now in January 2014. Why come forward now and not before now? No, I probably should have come forward then. This is, this is probably the hardest thing that I've ever done. So I probably should have come forward, but I literally, you know, I, I, I literally feel like we... I have to act in the best interests of Hoboken, and we are still at risk of not getting, there's another tranche of funding coming through, and we're not going to get it unless I move forward with the Rockefeller plan, which they're asking for one and a half to two million square feet. They're asking for their, for us to focus just on their area, not on the rest of the plan. And so, I, you know, my choices are, let me, let me just walk you through my choices. I mean, <laughs> my choices are to like, you know, say, keep saying, listen, I got to bring balanced development. I got to follow the law. Well, we're at risk of not getting Sandy funding. We've really virtually gotten no Sandy funding. So we're at risk of not getting any more Sandy funding, getting, you know, we got our 300,000. Um, 
or if I play along and I try to you know get the planning not that that would even necessarily be possible and ethically I couldn't do it but say I, I could play along well it's gonna be the, you know so that would actually mean I would be giving a windfall to one private property owner that the governor wants me to do that and then you know who's gonna be on the line it's gonna be the city of Hoboken it's gonna be Don Zimmer who's gonna be on the line we will be completely exposed we will be having to uh, you know we'll be in a court case immediately immediately will be and I will have to testify am I gonna stand on the you know on the stand and lie I can't I know what's going on here. I know that I received a direct message. I know that the Christie administration is connecting the Sandy funds to this Rockefeller project. And why, so, and so I, why, why have they given you any indication why Rockefeller matters so much to them? I don't, I, to be honest, like, I don't, I don't, still don't understand. I just know that there's these, I know that there's been pressure all along. I don't quite understand, like, why, why, why he would do this. I mean, but I know. What I do know is the lieutenant governor, she came and, you know, you, you know, you don't forget when the lieutenant governor of the state of New Jersey pulls you aside in a parking lot and says, I know it's not right. I know these things should not be connected, but they are. And if you tell anyone, I'll deny it. You remember it. You remember it. I'm just curious, in, in that moment, what do you say? What, do you, what did you say back to her? What would you say back to, to Constable? Well, I, said, I mean, what I said back at the time was, is anyone else being required? Is any other town being required? to do development in exchange for help with the flooding? And her, and her answer was, well, the shore brings in $38 in, billion in revenue. I mean, just to be clear, I mean, I, I, I do support, I do want to bring, you know, commercial development to, to Hoboken, but we have to be very careful with how we do it, in part, you know, because we have transportation issues. I mean, we want to, we want to address our flooding issues, but we also have major transportation challenges. The north end of Hoboken, there's only two small bridges into our city, and it's already backed up. And residents are already concerned about the level of development. So if I was to give the Rockefeller Group the two million square feet that they want, well, then what am I going to give the, you know, the other property owners? The other property owner that owns nine million square feet. I mean, right now we have a plan with New Jersey Transit where we're proposing two million square feet at the south end of Hoboken. That's where it makes more sense. Yeah, and, and, to, to have, and that's you know, something so for people. I think you know, to, I used to live in Hoboken for a few years, and if, if, if people aren't familiar with the city, it, we say <laughs> densely packed, densely populated city. This is a one square mile city with fifty thousand people, where you know space is really at a premium uh, in this city. I want to take a quick break here. We're going to come back with the mayor, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what exactly not having the San Diego you, you request has meant and what avenues you have right now to, to actually get the money your city needs. Because if there's another Sandy tomorrow, Hoboken's just as exposed as it was before. So we're going to talk about that right after this.